Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this vintage inspired skirt. I did actually make a digital pattern for this project, so if you'd like one of these for yourself, do feel free to follow along step by step. The pattern is available both as a gridded version as well as a tiled printable PDF version. I did a survey on my Instagram to try and decide which one to do and that tied and I couldn't decide, so here we are. They're both available on a pay what you want basis, which basically means there's no set price on there uh, and you just pay whatever you're able. I know that this past year was really tough for a lot of people, myself included, and I know that not everyone has the budget to pay for sewing patterns right now, especially if you're doing this as a hobby. I probably won't be able to do this for every pattern that I make just because it does take quite a lot of time and so it's quite a big investment on my part to be putting out there without expecting a lot in return. But I did want to start off 2021 by just putting something positive out into the world and, you know, saying thank you to all of you who've been hanging out in this little corner of the internet with me and leaving kind comments and you're all so lovely. So thank you and that's what this is all about and the link for that is down in the description if you're interested. I did also want to take a quick moment just to talk about pattern sizing. So this pattern is a bit of a trial for me. I don't know how much interest there's going to be both in this pattern specifically as well as putting patterns with my videos in general. So because of that there are three sizes in the pattern instead of the whole size chart. The waist measurements are 65 centimeters, 85 centimeters, and 105 centimeters. I'll pop the inches measurements up on the screen somewhere. I did also include instructions on how to alter the pattern to get to your specific waist size though, whether you're between the pattern sizes or whether you need to go bigger or smaller. I hope that this is an okay compromise for everyone. Uh, this is the first digital pattern that I've made and I need to find a balance between it being accessible to everyone and including every size, while also still being manageable for me to do by myself in the time frame that I had. So assuming you've got your copy of the pattern and you want to follow along, the first thing you're going to do is pick the size that's closest to your waist measurement and get the pattern ready to go. If you're using the gridded version, that's going to mean scaling it up to full size. If you're using the printable PDF version, that's going to mean printing it out and taping it together. If you are right in between two sizes, then it's really up to you which one you pick. It's not going to make a big difference either way. And again, I will be going through in just a moment how you adjust it to get to your exact size. I'm going to try not to get into too much detail about how to get the patterns ready to go just because I'm sure there will be people watching who are not following along and who are not interested in this. But there are instructions for scaling up a gridded pattern and for taping together the printed pattern in the actual pattern instructions. So with the gridded pattern, each little square on the pattern represents 2.5 centimeters or one inch in real life. So what I do is I use pattern paper that has a grid that size and I make a reference point, I do mine in the top left corner, and then just count over and down how far away certain points on the pattern are from your reference point and just transfer the pattern that way. There are also basic instructions for how to scale up a gridded pattern in the instructions in case this is the first time you've used them or there are videos and tutorials all over the internet. It is important to note that the gridded pattern does not include seam allowance, so if you're using that one, please do make sure to add seam allowance before you cut out your fabric, at the very least. With the printable PDF version, first of all, there is both an A4 size and a US letter size, so do make sure you're using the right one for your country. And second of all, please, please make sure that you print just the first page first, there's a little test square on that page, which you can use to make sure that you're printing at the right scale. Once you know that you're printing at the right scale, you can go ahead and print out all your pieces and cut them along the outer boxes. To assemble all your pages, just match up all the little triangles on the side with corresponding letters and numbers. So A1 to A1, A2 to A2, and then tape it all together. When you're cutting out, make sure to pay attention to what line you're cutting on. 
The dotted line is the seam line and the solid line is the seam allowance. So unless you're changing the seam allowance, cut on the solid line. Personally, I would recommend adding a bigger seam allowance on the center back. I used 2.5 centimeters. Later, I'll be showing you how you can use that to alter your skirt in the future if you change size. This is a pretty simple pattern to adjust, so I'm really just showing the basic idea here. But again, there are further instructions in the instructions. Essentially what you'll do is you'll take the difference between your waist measurement and the waist measurement of the pattern and split it evenly across all the panels. Start with the front piece and cut it straight down the middle. If your waist is bigger than the pattern, you'll spread the halves apart, and if your waist is smaller than the pattern, you'll overlap the halves. Add a new piece of paper underneath if you spread them apart, and then just tape them in place. You then just repeat this for the other pattern pieces. The only piece that's a little bit different is the side front piece, the one that has the cutout for the pocket. That's because we want to keep the angle of that cutout the same, even if we change the pattern size, because otherwise the pocket piece won't fit. To do that, you just extend the right side of that pocket line, the one that connects to the side seam. Extend the waist curve to meet it if you need to. I also wanted to bring up ease. This pattern is pretty versatile, and you can make it with nearly any non-stretch fabric. It does also have ease already included, three centimeters or just over an inch, which should give you a nice snug fit with most fabrics. However, if you're using a very thick fabric, like a thick wool, I would recommend adding a little bit of extra width to the waist. If you're having any trouble adjusting your pattern or figuring out what size you need to make, please do just leave me a comment and I can help you figure it out. Cutting out your fabric is essentially a very straightforward process. All you really do is you take your paper pattern, you lay it on top of your fabric, obviously make sure grain lines are lined up and all of that, and you pin it in place and then you just cut around the outside. Obviously, um, you need to make sure that you have your seam allowance included. Uh, my gridded version of this pattern does not have seam allowance included, so you do need to make sure you add it. If you're using the PDF printable tape together version, um, you're fine. That has 1.5 centimeters included on all the edges. And yeah, it really is that simple for most fabrics. Of course, um, unfortunately, my fabric was not quite so simple, which is why I just wanted to take a second to address that and to explain both what I did and why I did it. Because essentially, these next few steps that I took, they were problem solving because my fabric was giving me problems. And I just wanted to be very, very clear that if your fabric is not giving you problems, you absolutely do not need to do this. So my fabric is very loosely woven and it frays very easily. Because of this, I wanted to overlock the pieces straight away after I cut them out. This led to a sort of chain reaction of <laughs> difficulties, if you like. So with the way an overlocker works, you usually cut off a little bit of the edge of the fabric as you sew. Sometimes you can sort of cheat it and you can overlock right on a cut edge. This fabric was just not having it, I did try it. So I knew that I needed to cut out my pieces with a little bit extra room and then overlock them back to the cut edge that's on the pattern. This led to the second problem because this fabric did not mark easily. So I did try a whole range of things but because the fabric is like a mix of black and white and brown. Just any color I put on it just really did not show. So what I ended up doing was thread marking each piece. This basically just meant I pinned my pattern down and just sewed a really long stitch along the edge of the pattern, the same spot that you would cut it usually. Then I cut the pattern pieces out with some spare room around the outside and set them through an overlocker, which brought it back to that original edge. Obviously this does mean that my seams are already finished off, which won't be the case if you didn't do it this way. So the first option is to finish off your seams now, 
you could do this by overlocker or by zigzag. You don't need an overlocker to make this pattern. So no worries if you don't have one, zigzag will do just as well. Or you could wait until later and you could finish off your seams by felling them down. You could do that either by hand or by machine. And I will be mentioning later on in the video at what point you should do that if you're going that route. It's also a good idea to label your pattern pieces as you cut them out. So I just do this very, very simply. I write the number of the pattern piece and which side it goes on on little scraps of paper. And I just pin it to the piece before I cut it out. This will just save you a lot of stress later on because the pieces in this pattern, they do all look very similar. And if you label them, you will be able to tell them apart a lot easier. The first thing I'm going to sew is the pockets. Uh, that's because the pocket actually forms part of the side seam, so the pockets need to be in before the skirt can be sewn together. And before you can start sewing the pocket, the edge that forms the opening of the pocket needs to be finished off. So that's the angled edge at the top of the side front pattern piece, and you need to cut the seam allowance off of that edge. I'll make sure to stick a little diagram here so that you can see what I'm talking about. But basically we're cutting off the seam allowance because that edge is going to be bound. Again, I did do mine with an overlocker, but that's totally not necessary if your fabric doesn't fray as easily as mine. I'm using a black wool to bind mine. This is actually pretty thick and it doesn't fray at all, which is great. <laughs> So I'm not actually adding any seam allowance to the width. That just means I'm not going to be turning the edges under, I'm going to be leaving them raw. With most fabrics you will need a seam allowance and you're basically just going to sew the binding on like you would a piece of bias binding. Don't actually use bias though because we don't want this opening to stretch over time. I also ignored the pointed bits at the end of the pattern and just cut longer strips instead. The reason that the pattern looks like this is because the pattern piece is at the correct angle for where the binding joins the side and the top of the pattern piece. So essentially, as long as you cut it longer than you need, you'll have exactly the same result by just sewing on a straight strip and then trimming it back afterwards. So altogether, that just means that I cut strips that were three centimeters wide and then I ironed them in half. I basted them in place over the pocket edge just to make sure everything was lined up nicely and then I just used a machine straight stitch to sew them down securely. By this point you're probably starting to see that the pocket pattern piece is actually just the back of the pocket. So to get this piece ready to go we're going to press the seam allowance up on all edges that aren't included in a seam. This is a little bit different between the different pattern sizes, so I will stick another diagram up here to make it a little easier to see. Make sure that you're pressing your seam allowance towards the right side of the fabric, so that's actually the opposite of what you'd normally do. And finally, we can sew the pocket on. So put the pocket piece behind the skirt panel so that both right sides of the fabric are facing up and you can see the pocket opening. It should line up at 16.5 centimeters down from the top right edge and seven centimeters across from the top right edge. That's regardless of what size you're using. If you're using the taped together pattern, you will have notches for this already. And then you just sew it down. So I sewed from one edge of the pocket opening all the way around to the other edge. And then I actually did another line of stitching just inside of that. That was to encase the, that's not a raw edge, the overlocked edge, just because I didn't want to be able to feel it when I put my hands in the pockets. Here are the finished pockets. I sewed mine on with a thick black thread that was in hopes that it would make it a little bit easier for you to see, but I don't think it helped a whole lot. So hopefully you can see it if I get right up close to it. But yes, the pockets sit here and continue up to the top. Again, this is the side seam. So your pocket will be in the seam here, no matter which size you have. 
this is how that opening looks and this is what the back looks like. So now that the pockets are finished we can lay these panels aside and we can move on to the front. The centre front edge also needs to be finished off before we can start assembling the skirt. That's for a similar reason to the pockets. So essentially the centre front edge is going to be put into the waistband, right? So once the waistband goes on, you're not going to be able to change this edge anymore. Now, don't worry about this too much in terms of sizing because we are going to be able to change and make adjustments uh, on the other seams. So just finish this off exactly as it is on the pattern and if you do need to adjust the size a little bit later on, I'm actually going to be showing how to sew the centre back to make it a little bit easier to adjust. So to start off with, I'm just ironing my front edge in place. I'm folding back my seam allowance, which was one centimetre, and then I'm folding back another three centimetres. That should give you a centre front edge that looks something like this from the inside of the skirt. So here you can see the seam allowance that's folded under and then it's folded again. This here measures three centimetres and the centre front edge is actually in the middle of those three centimetres. So it's 1.5 centimetres in. That's because we need a bit of an overlap to be able to put the buttons on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down this edge. I'm getting ready to sew the buttonholes on my skirt, so I'm just making a few samples and I thought I would show you my process. So generally my samples do always look like this, I just use random offcuts of fabric, which is absolutely fine because again, it's a sample, it doesn't need to be perfect. And you can see that I've already started a buttonhole here. I did actually stop working on that buttonhole because I realised that I didn't like the colour. So instead I'll be using either a black or a beige and I have those ready to go. So to actually sew my buttonholes, I start by sewing a line of machine stitching around the outside of the opening. I did actually sew two extra lines on this one. Again, that's because I'm using a fabric that frays a lot, but generally I do just use one line and you can see on the first buttonhole there is just one line of stitching there. So this line of stitching goes around the outside of the opening. So I'm going to cut from here down through the middle to there. Then I'll just go all the way around the outside with a buttonhole stitch. I did want to mention that the buttonholes on this skirt are actually vertical buttonholes, so they go the same direction as the centre front of the skirt. That's because I really wanted this pattern to be beginner friendly, and the vertical buttonholes are just a little bit more forgiving when it comes to button placement. And that's because the button sits in the middle of the buttonhole. With horizontal buttonholes, the button sits close to the edge. So obviously you need to get the height of everything just right, but you've got a little bit of wiggle room here, as long as you sew everything on the centre front edge. But again, that's marked on the pattern, so that should be easy enough. And here's what the finished buttons and buttonholes look like. I didn't actually film any instructions for how to hand sew buttonholes, just because the colours I was using weren't really showing up very well on camera. But if you are interested in seeing a step-by-step, -step, then definitely just let me know and I can film a little video showing how to do it. Once the pocket and buttons are done, we're ready to start putting the skirt together. So this is probably the easiest step, but also probably the most satisfying because this is when the skirt actually starts to look like a skirt. I start with one of the front pieces and I just work my way around the skirt until I get to the other front piece. The panels get sewn together, right sides together, and I always start sewing at the waist edge. My fabric had already stretched on the bias a little bit, so the bottom edge doesn't line up perfectly on all the pieces, but that's nothing to worry about. We're going to be leveling the hem later anyway. <laughs> 
Finally, I just iron all my seams and press the seam allowances apart. In this clip, you catch a glimpse of the center back seam, and like I mentioned earlier, I actually used a bigger seam allowance on that seam, and again, that's because I want to make this skirt easier to adjust in the future. There's going to be a little bit more on that in the next section of the video. Finally, if you didn't finish off your raw edges at the beginning of the project, you should do that now. Personally, I would probably sell the seams down, so fold the seam allowance over. That doesn't make any sense. It's fine. Fell the seams. <laughs> the waistband of the skirt is made out of four pieces. There's a left and a right pattern piece, but you need to cut out an inside and an outside of both of those. For most fabrics, you can cut all four of these out of your top fabric, but again, I'm using a really thick fabric. How many times have I said this in this video? Too many. <laughs> So I'm making the inside of my waistband out of a thinner cotton fabric, just to keep bulk down. So when we start putting the waistband together, we're actually going to go in a bit of a weird order. Again, that's because we want that adjustability along the center back seam. So what you're going to do is you're going to take both left waistband pieces and put them right sides together, and both right waistband pieces. And we're essentially going to sew the waistband in halves. So you're going to sew them together all the way across the top and across the center front. You're going to leave the center back open for now because obviously that's where the left and the right will need to be joined together. Once that top edge is sewn, you can press that seam open and put the two waistband pieces right sides together at the center back and then sew the center back seam. Do make sure that this seam is lined up so that your waistband is even. And then once you've done that, you can also go in and clip your corners and then turn the waistband right side out. And here is what the center back seam of the waistband looks like once it's sewn. So this seam allowance will get pressed apart. And then once the waistband gets turned right sides out, the seam allowance at the bottom edge will get turned up and it will look something like that. Now this does create a little bit of bulk right at the center back here, especially with a fabric as thick as what I'm using. That's because I don't want to clip any of this seam allowance because this is what will make the alterations possible later on. If you're using a thinner fabric, it's really going to be a non-issue. And I would say if you want to make this really adjustable, like if you want to put more than, I think I have 2.5 centimeters either side, so that's maybe, maybe four centimeters that I can make this skirt bigger. If you want a lot more than that, I would say use a thinner fabric so that you can leave more seam allowance in here. But essentially, what this is going to mean is that once it's sewn to the skirt, I can unpick just the back of the waistband, I can alter the center back of the skirt, the center back of the waistband, and put them back together. I decided I wanted to top stitch the waistband into place for this project, so the next thing I did was turn it right way out and press. That included both of the ends, and that also included taking the seam allowance from the outer layer and turning it up. That gave me a waistband that looks like this. So from the inside, you can see the seam allowance of the outer fabric is both turned in and the inner fabric is not yet. We will be turning it in later. The squared end looks like this and the pointed end looks like this. We do have a weird bit of seam allowance here at the moment. This will get fixed when we eventually turn this seam allowance in as well. I do have a pulled thread here, which I'll need to fix. But essentially the reason that we could stitch all the way around here is because the skirt only goes to here. So when we're putting the skirt on, you're going to fold the inner fabric out of the way and just lay this on top of the waist of the skirt and then just top stitch along the bottom edge. Remember that the waistline for this skirt is actually curved. 
So the point that fits your waist measurement isn't this edge here, it's actually further in. So if you've tried on your skirt already and you found that it's too small, that's what's happened because this curve further in is actually a little bit bigger than the edge. So the waistband is the size of the stitch line. So in order to make it fit, all we're going to do is make a couple of small cuts into the skirt fabric, which will just allow it to open up enough to be the correct size. You do want to start small with this, so don't cut all the way to your stitch line. Cut maybe halfway, less than a centimeter. And I'm just doing two cuts on each panel, and that's enough to give me the ease I need to get the waistband on. To finish off the waistband, I'm going to take the inner piece and fold it towards the inside of the skirt. Then I'll take the seam allowance and fold it under, and I'll just hand sew this edge down. This should be ending at the same point as the top stitching that I did on the outside. Once the waistband is all finished off, I'll flip back to the outside of the skirt and I'll do another row of top stitching along the top of the skirt. And here is what the finished waistband looks like. So you can see that row of top stitching that I did at the top of the waistband. Now what this is for is it just keeps the inner fabric from showing through to the outside. You can also see that I've added in my last button and buttonhole. And on this one, because it's a horizontal buttonhole, the button sits at the edge of the buttonhole rather than in the center, like the vertical ones. I will also be adding a hook and bar at the center front, because as you can see, this is quite a big opening to be secured only at that one end. Before we can sew the hem, we need to level it, or make sure it's an even length all the way around. The panels all have one side, which is slightly on the bias, which can stretch a little when you leave it hanging up. Some fabrics will stretch more than others, but it's important to leave the skirt hanging up before you hem it, regardless of whether you think you need it, because otherwise the stretch will happen anyway, it will just happen while you're wearing the skirt and then the hem will end up uneven later. So I left mine hanging up overnight before I did this. Leveling a hem is a little tricky to do by yourself, so it's helpful to have someone to help you, or at least a mannequin to put it on. If not, don't worry too much. Honestly, this length is really forgiving, so you'd probably be fine if you did it by eye or measured down from the waist instead of up from the floor. Essentially, what you do though is measure up from the floor and find the shortest point of the skirt. Then move all the way around the skirt, making marks at that same measurement. Then you can just cut the skirt along that line. Once you have an even length, just hem your skirt. I overlocked my bottom edge and then just folded it up once and top stitched it down. This was just to reduce bulk, but you could do a regular hem where you fold it up twice. You could bind your edge, you could do a facing. It's really up to you. And that's it.
And yeah, that's the skirt finished. I am curious to see how this project is received because I think this is a direction that I'd like to explore a bit more. I like the idea of making videos that have patterns included with them. And from a viewer standpoint, I think it would be really nice if you see someone make something that you like to actually be able to get the pattern and make it yourself. But it does add a lot of extra steps into the process, especially if I want to make patterns that are in more than just my size. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm aware that I'm small and that my size is in no way indicative of the rest of the costuming community. And I think it is really important that if I produce something that it suits more than just people who look like me. And that's where you start to run into problems, right? Because as much as I would like to make weekly videos and also include patterns with them, you know, it's just not possible. I mean, I tried it with this week and clearly that didn't happen because it's been more than a week since I posted my last video and yeah, <laughs> I tried. And even with the relatively simple no fittings required pattern that I made, it took a while. So yes, I think it's it's really about finding a balance and and figuring out both what I want to do and what you want me to do because if this goes over very well and this is what people want then you know I can look into doing more of it but it's hard to say you know because there is a lot involved in, in grading patterns. If I make a pattern in my size, I can't just do a bit of math and stretch it and suddenly it fits someone 10 sizes bigger than me. It wouldn't look good. And I do have a video planned where I talk a little bit more about that because I think if it's not something that you're involved in and not something that you've been taught, then it's hard to know what goes into pattern development and I'd like to do a good job of it, you know? I wouldn't want to just churn things out for the sake of it and have them not look good on everyone. Um, anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I haven't even posted this video yet and I have no idea whether anyone's even interested in this pattern. But yeah, I mean, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know whether you think it's a good idea, whether it would be useful to you at all. And yeah, I think that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do share pictures with me if you try making this skirt. And I'll see you next time. Bye!